Welcome to Simply Science from Nature Education. I'm Adam Weiss and I'm here at the Whitehead Institute in Cambridge, Massachusetts with Dr. Hazel Siv, a, a member of the Institute and a professor of biology at MIT who looks at the structure of things. And I came to find out how I started out as a few little pile of cells and turned into me with trillions and trillions of cells. How does that process happen? That's a great question. Well, there are really two processes that you're talking about. One is that not all your cells are the same. So starting from just one cell, you're now made up of maybe 500 different kinds of cells. But the other question is how you got built into the 3D structure that is you. So those cells get built into different parts of your body and they make functional structures that have three dimensions. So it's the different types, but then also the construction. And that right. three dimensional part is important because otherwise I couldn't eat or breathe or even have blood flow through tubes. It just wouldn't work, right? Exactly. You'd look funny too. <laughs> right. <laughs> so how does that happen? Like I take a heart, for example, mm -hmm. a heart's a pump, but it's a pump made of a bunch of different kinds of cells. And it's got a very complex structure that does a very important thing. Mm -hmm. How does that happen? Well, it happens in ways that are very analogous to the ways we think about building things in our everyday lives. Building a house, building a car, starting off with a bunch of component parts and landing up with the final structure. And I guess uh, before we started, you threatened to make me build something. And in the, in the paper bag, you told me something analogous to building a heart might go on. <laughs> yeah, a surprise. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay so uh, I've got a bunch of post-it note bricks. Right, in attractive colors. And these are cells. Each okay. pile represents one cell. And what I want you to do, Adam, is to build something. And okay. from the process of building something, I want you to try to distill the principles that you're using to build whatever it is. So what would it take for the body to do something similar to what Ex I'm doing? Exactly. So is each cell each color a different kind of cell? Each color is a different kind of cell, and okay. what you're doing now is demonstrating one of the great principles of what the body does. You're sorting the cells into their different cell types. Okay, so you know this might be a muscle cell, this might be a bone cell, or something like that. Exactly, and, that and similar cells like to be together. Okay, so I guess I did one thing right already. Good. <laughs> Carry on. So you want me to build something? Build something. All right. Um, maybe I'll, I'll build a tube, pretending I'm building a, a, a blood vessel or a, something. A a very important thing to build, yes. I guess even the brain is a tube, right? Almost every organ is a tube. Okay. So I guess uh, these stick in certain ways and don't stick in other ways, so I'll ah, stick them together. you're sticking them together. Well, that's very interesting. So there's another principle of what cells normally do. They stick together. Okay. The glues are a bit different to the glues we use in, in everyday life, but they are glues nonetheless. What else did you do to get those cells over there to build the tube? Well, um, just to get them here, I had to move them over here and I had to put them together. Exactly. Physically, like stick them and move them. Right. So cells have to move and they have to know where they're going. And that's another principle of how you build things. You move them. I'm adding to my tube here. Good. Now, why are you adding? Why are you able to add? What do you have? Do you have just one cell or two cells? Well, I've got a bunch of these blue tube cells. But yes. I don't have enough to make a brain. Oh, and know? if you were <laughs> going to make a brain, you'd need more cells. Right. And those cells have the property, unlike most of the materials we use in everyday life. I guess they life, can make more. They, they divide, can make right? more. Yeah. Exactly. They can divide and they can make more of themselves. So there's another principle that the cells are dividing okay. so that they can actually build something that's big enough. So I have. You have a very tube here nice looking tube. And now what about these other cells sitting here? I guess I'd want to make something else out of another kind of cell and then combine this with that to make a more complex structure because it's not just the tube. You need support and supply and all sorts of other things that happen in the body, right? That's very good. So that's true. So this simple kind of tube that you built initially is going to get more complicated as you add to it. And that's the same principle that we see when we're building a house, for example. You start off with just the foundations and then the four initial walls, and then you add to it and it gets more and more complicated. Exactly the same thing when we're building structures in the body. They start off really simple and then they get things added to them that makes them more and more complicated. Okay, so let's say I have some tube and some bone here. Mm -hmm. I could put this together ultimately if I had a ton of this stuff yep. into an organ or, or a body part. Mm -hmm. What happens though if something goes wrong? I, I was just trying to build one of these bone pieces and found that this one wasn't sticky. Ah. So 
what happens when there's a problem in this structure? There's a pro if there's a problem in the structure, there's a problem in the function of the structure. And again, we can go to the analogy of a house. If you are building a house and something goes wrong early on during the building, then there's a catastrophe. The house never functions. The so house will never So you forget to put a wall in or you mess up the foundation or something. Exactly. You won't have a house. You can try and build onto the house, but it'll crash in on itself. It won't exist. Same kind of thing. If something goes wrong when you're building a heart or a brain really early during the building process, you'll never get out a functional heart or brain. But if something goes wrong later, you're putting on the roof of the house and you don't quite stick it on properly. All you'll end up with is a leaky roof and that's okay. quite easy to fix. Same thing in the heart. If there's some little thing that happens later on, you can go and fix it and the heart will be fine. So we have an idea of how to do things with the structures to fix little problems, but bigger problems we just can't deal with at the moment. Is that something we would be able to do in the future though? If somebody had a catastrophic failure of some organ in the future, would we ever be able to say, okay, start with the component parts and give them a new heart from the lab? From the lab. Well, that's, a, that's one of the great challenges of biology. It's a tough challenge. It's a challenge for the scientists of the future. I think it's very difficult to build something as complicated as a heart in the laboratory. I think we can build bits of the heart. We know that already. And we can use those bits of the heart to repair a heart. But whether we can ever build a complete heart, starting from the pile of cells, I'm not sure. We'll have and to I guess, see. I guess if we were able to get something that looked kind of like a heart, it'd be even harder to get it to be complete without something like a leaky roof in the, in the house analogy. Perhaps so. Perhaps so. Well, thank you very much for telling us about what you do. And I had fun building bones and tubes out of post-it notes. Good. You did great. Okay, thanks. <laughs>